Hi, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. I did a series of videos on building this CIMF amplifier and I promised that I'd do an overview video of just what was involved in building this amplifier. So that's this video. I'm also going to talk about a power supply upgrade that I'm in the process of making. So I've changed over one channel. I'm yet to do the other, so I'll be able to show you the difference that that has made. But before I do that, let's just dive in and I'll give you the overview of just what was involved in this. So firstly, just looking at the amplifier itself, you can see the front panel. The front panel is very plain and simple. All that's on the front panel is the power LED and that's it. Let's turn around and have a look at the back. And this is the back, also quite simple. It has an IEC connector for power in. It has a power switch, it has speaker terminals, and it has RCA line-ins. If we have a look at the inside of the amplifier itself, the actual parts that were supplied to me by Harrison were the power amplifier boards themselves, which are down here, and the protection boards, which are here. So the design decision that I made was to go for a dual monoblock design. So basically what you see is I can draw a line pretty much straight through here and you can see that we have a symmetrical design. So each channel has its own separate power supply, its own separate toroidal transformer and the only thing that is common really is the mains input. So I purchased the Disapante chassis from DIY Audio Systems and you can go and look at my series of videos to see the reasons for why I went for that. But the main reason was because there's a few options in terms of you can get the plate with options so that these connectors are included, for example, the rocker switch IEC connector is included and the RCA connectors are included and the holes are pre-drilled so that meant that I didn't really have to drill any holes I think the only hole I drilled in the actual front panel was for the LED and I don't think I drilled I think I drilled some mounting holes in the rear panel and that was about it so if we just have a look at the arrangement, it's going to be a little bit tricky because it's hidden underneath. Let's just see if I can sort of show you. I don't think I'm going to be able to quite clearly be able to show it, but basically we have the mains comes in down underneath there. Then I have it going through a power filter. That's obviously not absolutely required, but I thought that it would be really nice to have a power filter. Then it goes through this uh, Antec supplied uh, delay and surge protector. So it basically has a low value power resistor inside of there. So you don't get a massive great big surge when you turn it on because of course it looks like a, a dead short basically when you do turn it on. So it's nice to have that. And then coming out of that, we then have the mains is going off to these two transformers. So that's the point where it basically splits. And from then on, we go to our dual monoblock design. So even though you can probably see that this case is really rather enormous, there's quite a bit of space still left in the top, but it actually was quite challenging to get everything in. The main thing is the, the transformers. You can see they're kind of jammed up a little bit against one another. These covers were not absolutely essential, but I, it just makes it look so much nicer rather than just having toroidal transformers just kind of looking at your raw there. I thought that the, the covers make it look a whole lot nicer. So we then have obviously the secondaries and the secondaries then go through a bridge rectifier. So there's one bridge rectifier down there, then there's another bridge rectifier there. And then we come to our bolt capacitors. I'll talk a little bit more about those in a second, but we have one pair there, plus and minus rails, another pair there, plus and minus rails there. 
there is another secondary winding that comes out on the transformers i think it's 16 volts ac or so that's this one here and this one here which is going to these little circuit boards these are just 7812 linear voltage regulators and these are making 12 volts dc because the protection boards need 12 volts dc so again because i have this dual monoblock design where i have two separate toroidal transformers it means that everything is separated from everything uh, so i have actually two 12 volt power supplies for the protection boards one for left and one for right so then we come to the actual amplifier boards themselves so the way that these had been manufactured they were designed to be mounted uh, perpendicular to the heatsink but I wanted to free up as much of this space down here as I possibly could because I knew that I was going to need it to be able to mount all of this stuff. So I took the transistors out and turned them around upside down and bent them 90 degrees so that I could mount these amplifier boards parallel to the heatsink rather than perpendicular. So that's given me a heap of space. It has made accessibility a little bit of a nightmare and that obviously i can't really access anything on this circuit board easily if i needed to access it i'd pretty much have to disassemble the entire amplifier which is certainly not something that i really want to be doing so that's a downside of doing it that way but it's what enabled me to to get all of this stuff into this chassis so those power amplifier boards are mounted onto these heat sinks. I needed to drill and tap these, which I'd never ever done in my life. I'd never drilled and tapped aluminium before. So I needed to research that. So obviously drill the holes first. You can have a look at the video to see how I did it. But I had to drill the holes, then tap them with two different kind of taps um, because they're blind tapped. The hole doesn't go through all the way. So you kind of like get it started with a normal taper tap and then you need to use a special uh, blind tap to be able to finish it off so that was um, quite an interesting experience quite a hair raising experience because if you stuff a hole up then potentially you've stuffed the heat sink and that's would be really bad but fortunately that did not happen so i'm quite pleased with how that turned out the um the boards have got spade terminals quick connects if you want to call them that on them for connecting the various things so i bought a bunch of uh, quick quick connects to take care of most of the wiring so that has helped a fair bit in terms of being able to plug those in and so on and then these little uh, panels which are available as an option from diy audio store these obviously i have got the protection boards mounted on this side and then here is my little 12 volt regulator to power the protection boards so that's the general arrangement as to how it's laid out and hopefully gives you a good idea in what was actually involved in building it i just want to talk a little bit now about the power supply upgrade that i'm in the process of doing so you can see that i've got two different kinds of bulk filter capacitors this channel this is how i built it originally this is the left channel then the right channel i finished the upgrade on the right channel so the left channel it has these 10,000 mic kennets in there so this was in my discussions with harrison this was what we decided to put in there originally but i just noticed on the scope that there was a little bit more ripple than i would like there have to be we've upgraded to this. So this is a 33,000 mic Nichicog. As you can see, I think they've actually fitted in really quite nicely. I've sort of worked out the spacing a little bit. I think on this side, they'll fit even better. I will have to move this bridge rectifier over just a little bit, I'll probably shove it up into this corner a little bit more. 
but you can see this one here I just had to put around a corner a little bit from you know my idea in the design was that this was a line that I didn't want to have things around here but I did have to have it around here a little bit but I think that's okay so the other two will fit in here quite nicely you can see the the physical difference between these things is massive this thing is is huge but it does fit quite nicely so we've gone from 10,000 mic to 33,000 mic and I'll hook this thing up to the scope and just show you what difference that has made okay so I've currently got the scope leads on the positive side of each channel and if we have a look at the trace so both channels are 0.2 volts per division and channel one is on the 10,000 mic cap and channel two is on the 33,000 mic cap so you can see that there is actually quite a difference we're AC coupled obviously you can see that there is quite a difference between the two channels and now if we just switch over to the negative side unsurprisingly on the negative side we see a similar result again a significant improvement with the 33,000 mic capacitor now I don't have any reason to believe that that ripple was especially audible I haven't actually done any tests yet because I need to get the other channel done I'm not going to cart this all the way out with it like this I'm going to do both channels I did notice a very very low level hum as built it was so low that did not disrupt my listening experience it will be interesting to see whether that low level hum has reduced or disappeared but nonetheless I think this certainly was a worthwhile upgrade to do and also you might have noticed over on this side that because I have these terminals these these lugs and so on it actually makes it a whole lot easier to do the connects and there's room there to put on these 0.1 mic bypass caps which I had floating around anyway so I thought given I had the space and it was easy to do I'd add those in whereas they would have been a lot more fiddly to add those in on that side so I'm quite happy with this improvement so anyway I think that kind of about wraps up where we are at this will probably be the last video I think on this SIMEF project but I hope you've enjoyed this video if you did you might like to go and check out the multi-part series of videos on how I constructed this amplifier for a little bit more detail on it thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed my video please do give me a like and a subscribe and I really look forward to seeing you on the next video bye for now